In the previous lesson, we had looked at this Ajax form where you could enter in information and it would do a dynamic check to the server to check if there is availability for the name. So if we tied a name like John, we see that the result is name is taken. Uh, we also included a button here to check content. Uh, so this is if we expanded our form or if we want to have some other trigger to do the actual Ajax check to the server. Uh, so this is just another trigger that does the same check to the server. So it's going to run that same function. Now let's look at the code. And the code here below for the HTML, so we've got our JavaScript here at the top and um, we've got basically set up a JavaScript function and then we've got all, all of our Ajax information here. And then just down here below within the body of the HTML, we've got our input field and all we've done here is we've added on key up and we're running this function on key up. So whenever anyone is interacting with the field and they do key up, it does it runs this function which runs a check and does that Ajax request over to our server. So checks in our server file, the PHP file, sends that name value, that username value from the input field over to the server and then does a check. And as uh, mentioned before, this button here, it's uh, currently it's not being used when we do this dynamic check on key up, but we've left that in here within this example in order to indicate that there are different ways to launch this trigger. Uh, so you could also add listening events and other different types of ways to trigger this function. So uh, the, the process is that as long as you're triggering the function at some point or whatever point that this check is going to be necessary, uh, that's when it's going to trigger that function and it's going to make that call to the server. And just uh, to look at the server file quickly, so this isn't going to be uh, too deeply into PHP. Uh, what we have here is we just have a name, so we're just doing uh, get name and we're returning that username information into PHP. So we can use it as a variable within PHP and we've set a user's array. Uh, so you can also do this differently if you've got a database. You could do a database connection to check if the name exists. Uh, or um, whatever you want to do to bring in that content that you want to check your existing information. And this is uh, what we may mean by interacting with the server because JavaScript itself cannot interact with the server. So it does need a constructor language in the background to do the interaction. Uh, so whether it's PHP or whether it's uh, some other constructor language or if you just simply have an output file uh, you can use Ajax to interact with that output file. So it's not really looking at anything, it's just looking at this file and checking that, uh, that response information. So even if we were go, going over to that PHP file by itself, and if we did something like name equals John, it returns back name is taken. If we go back something underneath that, we see that it, uh, the same result the, needs more than three characters. And that's because of this conditional statement. Uh, so within PHP, we're just doing a string length. Uh, so we're taking in this value that we received from the re request variable of name. We're taking in that value, setting it as a variable called name. And then over here, we're doing a string length. We're checking to see the length of this name, which whatever length of characters is available within this var variable is going to get returned over here. And if it's less than four, then this condition is met and we echo out needs more needs to be more than three characters and if this condition is not met it looks at else and that's where we've got a couple other uh, another conditional statement uh, so else so if it's not met if it's less than four we output this and if it's more than four we're going to look at this other condition here and here we're just doing a check to see if it's within the array so we're checking to see if name is in the users array and if it returns positive so if this condition again if this condition is true it's going to return it's just going to echo out name is taken and otherwise if the name is not taken and it's greater than four 
it's going to echo out the name is available. Uh, so this is our logic and your logic might be different depending on what you're trying to achieve with this form. Uh, so just got to make sure that it makes sense when you work through it. And if you're not familiar with PHP, all this, this is a very simple, um, very simple conditional statement and echo just outputs that that variable or that string information onto the web page and the web browser. So that's all it's really doing here. And that's what that PHP function is doing. And this is the same function that we're calling from our Ajax form. And we see here that when we do run that Ajax function, uh, it does query into this PHP file and it returns whatever value is being output here. So let's get uh, more into the code of the form. And we can see here that this is where we're doing that. Um, we're opening up, we're making a get request to check.php and we're sending along name equals username. And that username is the value of this input field that we've picked up over here. So we've just called username and we're doing got document get element by ID username dot value. And that's returning this, whatever value is available in this input field, it's returning as this variable and allows us to use that within JavaScript. 